In the not so great year of 2020, LEGO introduced the kind of great LEGO Star Wars helmet collection. And as part of the larger grouping of adult oriented sets, it was branded for ages 18 and up, although you certainly don't have to be 18 to purchase and enjoy these sets. In this video, we're going to compare all five LEGO Star Wars helmet sets so far, talk about whether you should buy one, two, maybe all five of them, or maybe even none of them, and the future of the LEGO Star Wars helmet collection. First thing you may notice when looking at the helmet collection, especially in store when you're considering which one to buy perhaps, is that all of the boxes are the same and this is something that's rare for LEGO Star Wars to actually get right, but it's something that I absolutely love about the helmet collection. All five boxes are decorated in the same style. It's got the name of the character at the top of the box, it's got that beautiful shot of the helmet on the front with the light emanating out from behind it, and then of course the rest of the box is just pure black essentially with a brick base at the bottom. Considering that Hasbro and their Black Series do their boxes so well, and it's kind of somewhat a sort of similar vein of product, at least going for kind of the same type of consumer in my opinion, it is nice to see LEGO somewhat caring about the continuity of their packaging in this case. Now with five helmet sets released so far, it can be a little bit daunting trying to pick just one if you're in the market for just one helmet series set. Now there's always the option to spend more money and get all five of them. In fact, if you want to own all five helmet sets, that's going to set you back $300. The original wave that came out in 2020 with the TIE Pilot here, the Stormtrooper, and Boba Fett here in the center cost $60 each for each individual helmet set. Now the wave released in 2021 was slightly smaller, including only two sets, with the Scout Trooper retailing for $50 and the Darth Vader retailing for a hefty, or at least comparably hefty, $70. So you can see there is now a range of prices, even though it all started at $60, which would have been preferable. I see the, the reason that these cost more and less. If you actually have them in hand, you can tell the Scout Trooper is lighter and Darth Vader is heavier. It makes sense that one is cheaper and one's more expensive than all the rest, but it does unfortunately mean there is some disconnect in the series there. Now that's not a necessarily bad thing if we look to the Black Series as the comparison that we're making in this particular video. They have a range of prices on their Black Series characters or action figures or whatever you want to call them. It just kind of went counter to what I was actually expecting with the Helmet Series when it started. When I saw all three cost 60 bucks, I just kind of assumed it would be a forever and always $60 thing, and it appears to not be that way, which is also good good because which means I can do things like Darth Vader and not have to cut corners. So instead of me telling you which one's best, maybe you guys can tell us which one's best. I did a poll on my YouTube community post that received over 35,000 votes on these five helmets to determine which helmet collection set most people thought was the best. And then of course, second, third, fourth, and fifth best, uh, depending on how many votes each got for being the best here. So this should give you some direction as to which set is the best based on basically everyone's experience experience altogether. But the character with the most votes was Boba Fett with 57% of the vote and I am inclined to agree with the consensus from the fandom here. I think that is a pretty sensible choice. Boba Fett is a very beautiful looking helmet set with a lot of pretty stunning details and of course Boba Fett very popular again thanks to the Mandalorian and him showing up in there. So yeah Boba Fett voted as the best helmet series set. Now the Scout Trooper received 20 percent of the vote and I think that's for good reason as well. I think the Scout Trooper was a really spot-on build with very good and accurate details and some nice stickers of course. Not as uh, big a build as the other helmet sets. In this case I think piece count and uh, size do not matter which is a great thing. With just 11 percent of the vote we have Darth Vader. You can comment what you will about the way this one turned out. I think Lego obviously did the best they could with what they had but Darth Vader is just a hard character to recreate in this type of build so so it is what it is and ended up getting 11% of the vote. I would wager if this wasn't such a big main character and Darth Vader wasn't Darth Vader, this wouldn't have got as many votes. Like I just don't find the build all that appealing, but it's still a fine helmet set and you're going to love it for being Darth Vader, I'm sure. Receiving 9% of the vote was the TIE Fighter Pilot. This one's actually a Target exclusive for what it's worth in the United States, which means you can't buy it at like Walmart, but otherwise you can just buy it from Lego as well. But the TIE Pilot is a really good looking one and it really just edged out the Stormtrooper helmet by actually a rather large margin. Uh, the Stormtrooper helmet only received 3% of the vote for being the best helmet series set, and I kind of get it. While I think it does an adequate job of representing a Stormtrooper, it is very fair to say that it is not the best 
helmet set. I, I think that's pretty much a fact at this point. I mean, this one, it, it just, it's fine. Like, you can enjoy it, but it's just not as good as Boba Fett or the Scout Trooper, which are just way more accurate and just way cooler looking, in my opinion. If you are trying to buy one or more of these, you can actually use the affiliate links in the description below to facilitate your purchase, and I will get a small kickback from those. That's pretty cool. But you know what's even cooler? The ways that you can actually use these to complement your own collection. I think that's the, like, best way to use these helmet collection sets. Now, don't get me wrong, they can go great on a desk as a standalone piece, but I think that these are best utilized as a collector and as someone who likes to display my stuff as complementary pieces to things you already own. So for example, you have the TIE Fighter pilot helmet here. Let's say you own the 2015 UCS TIE Fighter. Hey, maybe the TIE Fighter pilot helmet would be a great set to grab and throw next to that TIE Fighter. It's just a great side piece to have for that set in particular. The Stormtrooper is more of a jack-of-all-trades for any type of UCS Imperial set. It'd go next to that UCS Star Destroyer, UCS Death Star, you name it, the Stormtrooper is really just going to fit in well with it. As far as Boba Fett goes, there is certainly one choice that comes to mind, and that's if you own that 2014 UCS Slave 1 there, you probably should grab this Boba Fett and throw it next to it. I think the Boba Fett is also the best piece to have as a standalone piece, just because of its uniqueness as far as color goes goes everything else is just black and white and will be a little bit more subtle for your display but Boba Fett really pops out and is a really really nice piece and obviously judging by that voting that we did a lot of other people would agree there. The Scout Trooper is going to go well with anything that you have from your Endor setup or episode 6 really it doesn't have too much else usage for me personally I don't think there's too many sets it can go with I mean the Ewok Village kind of fits with it but even that the Ewok Village is in a display set kind of in the sense of the TIE Fighter or the Slave 1 there, so you kind of are a little bit more limited with the Scout Trooper, in my opinion, but it can still fit nice with some Imperial stuff nonetheless. And then finally, Darth Vader. Much like the Stormtrooper, Darth Vader can kind of be a jack-of-all-trades for anything Imperial, and is a good standalone buy as well, even if you don't have any of that other stuff. You can also put him with, like, Darth Vader's Castle, which is still currently available. Not a bad one. Or if you are one of those owners of the 2006 Darth Vader's TIE Advanced UCS set, this would go beautifully next to that as well. I'm just sure not a lot of you guys own that because of how old and expensive it is at this point, even though it used to retail for $100. Pretty crazy. Now, these five sets come off the heels of a 2019 bust from Star Wars Celebration that ended up not being the future of LEGO Star Wars here. I kind of thought that they might do more like this, and they actually did with the Sith Trooper in 2019 as well for Episode 9, but they ended up going for mainline sets with this kind of helmet design versus the bus design and you can argue whether or not the Darth Vader is better or worse but I think just in general going for these helmets and the way they've done it with the stands and the little display plaques and just everything about them I think is just generally smarter and more well done for a mainline product while this is a nice niche product for a con exclusive but yeah these helmet sets were definitely the way to go over these types of busts. So where does the Lego Star Wars helmet collection go from here? Well I think it's only up. I think that this is just the beginning for adult-oriented LEGO Star Wars sets in general, but especially the helmet collection. It's got a lot of potential. There are a ton of things that LEGO could end up making in this type of set. Now, that's not to say it's a guarantee. LEGO has been known to stop on a dime and just completely halt production of things. I, I think the best closest example to something we've had kind of like this is the MIDI scale for LEGO Star Wars. 2009 and 2010 each saw one set of the MIDI scale lineup with the Millennium Falcon and the Imperial Star Destroyer, and then they stopped cold turkey. Now, this was a different time for LEGO Star Wars, and I think sets like that would succeed in today's world, given the branding and everything, but the way I see it, there is a slight similarity in that this is kind of a new thing for LEGO, like it was for them back then, and they've done two years, and there is the potential that this could be it. Like, it's it's certainly no guarantee that we're going to get helmet sets forever. Now, of course, myself and probably a lot of you viewers want to know what's going to come out next, and obviously there is no answer to that, but my best guess, and what I desire truly in my heart as well is some prequel helmets some clone troopers would really be ideal for the next lineup of helmet series now that's not to say there aren't other great imperial helmets they could do because they've done a lot of imperial stuff already like the emperor's royal guard would definitely be a great addition of this lineup to be honest but i think in all 
likelihood 2022 we'll see some prequel sets and then 2023 perhaps we could see some sequel sets with a first order stormtrooper and kylo ren which would go very well hand in hand but i think before we see anything like that like sets like this have to be off the market to get something so similar in i was honestly rather disappointed when i found out there would only be two helmet sets this year versus three from last year so hopefully next year they can ramp it back up to three because i think three is kind of the ideal number there's also the possibility they could just do one from each trilogy each year but these sets do complement each other nicely when they come out and they're both like from the same era or all three are from the same era it just, it, it's nice both ways in my opinion but that is it if you guys enjoyed make sure you hit that like button if you have anything to say leave in the comment section below make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss any future lego videos thank you for watching i'll see you in the next one peace out